Hello and welcome to the final devotion here on the hymn, God's Own Child, I Gladly Say It. It's, it's stanza five today. And as we begin, we're going to look at um, another example of a baptismal font and the location in one of our churches. We go today to Resurrection Lutheran Church in Maumee, Ohio. And we're going to see there, um, it's similar to what we saw at the Chapel of the Christ in, uh, at Martin Luther College in New Elm, Minnesota. The baptismal font is right there at the entrance, kind of going up the aisle. And again, worshipers will, will pass right by it as they enter the sanctuary and be reminded of their baptism and the entrance into um, our lives as God's children. But there's also another aspect that was very deliberate in how it was designed. If you look at this picture, you see the, the baptismal font and then your eyes go up and you see the altar where um, we receive the, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And then even behind that, you see the pulpit where God's word is proclaimed. So a very clear message on the, the centrality of the means of grace. And of course, it all proclaims Christ. And we see the, the crucifix suspended um, up there above the altar. Um, a wonderful way to proclaim Christ. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, though, the, the basin specifically on the baptismal font. And for a church called Resurrection, it's certainly fitting. Um, inscribed on that basin are words from Romans 6, verse 4, which we've looked at numerous times this week. It says, Baptized into Christ's death, raised in his resurrection. So again, another great example of the, the symbolism pointing to what is truly important. The fact that we are God's own children through baptism and and we have what Christ won for us in his resurrection. Our final stanza today ties kind of everything together that we've talked about in this hymn. It compiles what what we've already talked about and, and comes to the conclusion that based on all the evidence, there's nothing more valuable than what God gives us in baptism. There's no equal. And it's confidence that no matter what sin, death, and the devil might try and do, they're powerless because our Savior, Jesus Christ, has won the battle. Now, people tend to get a little bit, um, sometimes uneasy, with the idea of seeing their grave. Maybe especially that, that open grave that we talked about yesterday. But, but here's what we sing, because for God's people, we know that it's simply a place for the life, where the lifeless body will rest. We sing... There is nothing worth comparing to this lifelong comfort, sure. Open-eyed, my grave is staring. Even there, I'll sleep secure. In stanza one, we said that God's forgiveness and assurance in baptism is is a treasure far greater than anything in this world. And we've we've talked about and and talked about with that baptismal font at, at Resurrection down in Ohio there. Um, that we were buried with Christ in baptism, raised to life. And Paul continues in Romans 6, verse 5, he says, If we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. And so we see baptism is for our daily lives. It's, it's for each and every day of our lives. It, it fits with the placement of each, each of those baptismal fonts that we've looked at this week. And again, that they all have a place, a very specific place, and they're not tucked in a corner and hidden somewhere. Because we see them, we, we remember what God did for us in baptism. Now we're going to turn to our book. We're going to see the boy that was baptized on the first page in stanza one, but here he's, he's on his deathbed. And he's surrounded by his wife, his daughter, his grandchildren. The pastor is there reading God's word to him. And where have we seen him? We've, we've seen him at the baptismal font, at the communion rail, hearing God's word proclaimed to him in church, but now it's clear death is lurking. But again, a wonderful illustration. If you look a little closer, you see on his bed, there's a crown. Looks like a maybe a do-it-yourself craft. Maybe one of the, the grandkids made him held together by a, a piece of tape. But it certainly brings to mind Revelation chapter 2, verse 10 that says, Do not fear anything you are about to suffer. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. 
And one other one that it, I didn't notice right away as we, we went through this book with our kids, but, but, but later on I did. And if you look right over here behind his bed, kind of or alongside it, you see an Easter lily, something we've come to recognize as kind of a symbol of the resurrection, that new life. And so even where death lurks, and it looks like death is going to be inevitable, we see that that reality that we have the crown of life, that, that the resurrection awaits us. So again, another wonderful, another wonderful job of, of um, illustrating that symbolism we see here. Now, remember Titus chapter 3, verse 5. It says, He saved us not by righteous works that we did ourselves, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. From our rebirth and holy baptism until our death here on earth, our gracious and loving Father reminds us that he watches over us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to be with us always. It's the words um, that he spoke to Joshua in Deuteronomy 31 when Joshua was getting ready to take over for Moses as the leader of the people of Israel. Here's what God said. Be strong and courageous because the Lord your God is going with you. He will not abandon you and he will not forsake you. Now the final words of the hymn and the, the final page of the book show the reality that, yes, our bodies will be placed in the grave awaiting the resurrection of all flesh while our souls join the heavenly chorus. And here's that, here's that final page, and here are the words. Though my flesh awaits its raising, still my soul continues praising. I am baptized into Christ. I'm a child of paradise. And we have a picture of heaven depicted um, in the Revelation of St. John, chapters 4 and 5, first of all, from chapter 4, uh, St. John records, A throne was standing in heaven, and also in front of the throne was something resembling a, a glassy sea, which was like crystal. And we'll jump to uh, chapter 5, verse 6, and it says, And I saw a lamb standing in the center. The lamb seemed to have been slain. And you can see the, the wound there. But then he, he speaks of the heavenly chorus. It says, With a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Our Savior completed the work of salvation. We, we now await the ultimate fulfillment when we will be with him for eternity. But, but we don't have to doubt, we don't have to worry. Because with God's seal and his promise, the blessings that he gives in baptism are as good as done. They are ours even now. It says he has given us the forgiveness of sins, the deliverance from death and the devil, and he gives that eternal salvation to all who believe it as the words and promises of God declare. Yes, once again, God's own child, we can gladly say it. We are baptized into Christ. Thank you so much for joining us this week as we look at this hymn. I I pray it's been a blessing to you as we look at at a hymn that that really is simple but teaches us great depths uh, or gets digs deep into what God's word tells us about baptism and about our salvation. And again, so this book here um, is from Gloria Publishing. I'm, I'm really not trying to advertise it to you. I I get no benefit from it by any means. But it's something I think is a really great way. It's um, a way to teach the faith. And by teaching it to our children, we ourselves come to know it even better too. So um, take a look at that. Again, the, um, the Facebook pages, if you're watching on Facebook, those are going to be down there. But then if you click the link, it'll take you and it'll show you not only this book, but the other ones as well. And they're really good ones too. So God's blessings on your day. And, and really thank you for, for joining us this week.